bone dry. You're such a booming voice, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. It, it works out because one of them doesn't have the compression, the amplification. So that's the one. So that that's I the get. one that you've been on for the past <laughs> couple weeks. Yeah. Ah, oh, your voice straight amplified. <laughs> we out here. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is not D and D. It's not. No. But it's kind of. But it D&D. looks. It looks D and D. It does. Ish. Roll for conversation. Ah, oh, shit. natural My one. Dice are in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Minus oh. one modifier, zero. <laughs> oh no. I well, hello, button, hello. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do the actual intro. Yeah. What's up? So, guys? hello. We are here with the D and D group after a year and a quarter yeah. of playing. Ooh. We did. We finished. What was it, two, two weeks, weeks ago? ago. And we've had time to think and feel and and, and want to do more. First couple of days were a drag. After that, I don't know how you guys felt, but I was. Moving yeah. a little slower. There, there was a certain gaping hole in my soul. Can you get my fidget spinner, bro? It definitely was it's right rough down there initially. Minimum. Yeah. Dude, so immediately afterward, when I walked in, when I was sitting in my room, the whole time I was just, ugh. I just felt this weight. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Everything is down. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, we're definitely going to talk about that at one point. But I think getting started in a positive direction very much like this campaign started uh oh but real quick to say what this actually oh is. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is two weeks later we're just kind of recapping talking about it and just uh reminiscing yeah we're just gonna go through our favorite moments and then kind of talk about what is happening next you know what we are gonna do we're gonna do one shots and all that stuff if i may pitch a title for this episode yeah. dungeons and therapy Ooh. Oh, episode sixty. <laughs> if episode you will, 60, by the way, <laughs> dungeons and therapy. Perfect. Topical. Welcome, Perfect. welcome to therapy. So, tell me how you feel. <laughs> first thing I want to talk about is uh, everybody's favorite moments from the campaign, just as a as a whole. And I absolutely don't want to go first, so I'm going to give it to Justin first. Oh, you dick. And um, uh, yeah, what, what was your favorite favorite moment in the campaign to this? You know, for for that pantheon of time. Um. I've had a lot of favorite moments. Um, I think I've discussed them before. I think uh, more recently, if we're talking about the second run from uh, Drunk Drawer 2.5 um, and onward from that has been, I think, the introduction in the arc of Thok, which I think has been super interesting because we we haven't spent as much time with Thok and he had a full arc that I wasn't expecting to happen, and that was fully Carlos being Carlos. That was so cool. I wasn't expecting it either. That, I mean, Spoilers. In case, oh, anybody, yeah. in case anybody isn't caught up, this will post after we posted our final episode, but in case you haven't watched it, um, spoilers. Yeah. Cool. Starting now. <laughs> so Thok dies. Um, <laughs> again. Again. Uh, He's redid. He he super dead. Um, no, I dead. think Carlos having his full arc and you know pitching that to me you can watch on the episode of my reaction i haven't seen it but i know i i reacted very visibly i'm usually pretty good with when like i'm gonna do this and i'm like okay and then carlos is like yeah i'm gonna denounce my god and uh i'm gonna deny him now i'm like okay great uh that was really cool i think um for me as a dm was really fun was uh Kresik in general because um, <laughs> Kresik in reality is a whole chapter uh, that's where the wedding dress from like a million episodes ago was supposed to be for um, oh, yeah. the way Curse of Strahd is structured you run into basically all of the universal monsters kind of um, Burgermaster uh, his son is invisible you never ran into that um, so he's invisible man you have Straw, Dracula, Kresik would have had your Frankenstein, which would have been this fr- flesh golem and this guy making him a bride. And you would have had to give him the wedding dress to be like, oh, yay. <laughs> so Bride of Frankenstein, you have the werewolves. Uh, I don't think there's a swamp thing, but um, or a gill man. But there were so many like Kresik for me was just a homebrew thing that I talked about for like three weeks with Shane, my DM. And uh, I just thought it was super. Is everyone fidgeting today? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was just super cool, and uh, I had a good time with that. I think um, overall, I felt I didn't think I was gonna feel satisfied with the ending, just because um, I felt like I, me personally, I was rushing everything. But I don't know if it read out like that for you guys. I, I, one thing that I, because this timed with the end of Game of Thrones, I think multiple times I said I don't want to end this like Game of Thrones, where yeah. everything's feels rushed and yeah. to me it didn't feel rushed at all okay. like i felt everything had its 
like a realistic conclusion. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I felt really good about how it ended. It felt super prepared. It felt like you knew what you were doing going into it. Like that was one of the, yeah. But I mean, that's the part of being the DM. Like you, if you're a good DM, you know, like Mercer talks about it all the time where he's just like, you just kind of got to go with it. Like things aren't always flushed out in your head and they're like, I want to go here. And you're like, okay, yeah. you just have to make shit up. But um, what kind of went into your decision for, like, Thok to, to just be like, fuck you, Anubis? It's it's funny because that's not the way that I was going with it. I, like, I kind of... A lot of decisions with Thok, since I built this character, like, two years ago, like, there's so much backstory and, like, mm-hmm. so much with him that even you guys don't know, like, because I started him as a level one, mm-hmm. like, and I've progressed with him as a life cleric before and then like his first death and then him coming back as a grave cleric and so on and so forth like i've always just done things on the whim with him like i've never pre-planned or anything like and that's why even when justin asked me hey like where do you think fuck would go after this would he stay in barovia would he go with the guys would he go on his own and i'm like honestly like if he had a decision he's probably gonna go on his own like he was here he came to do what if we defeat Strahd, he's gonna do what he's gonna do and then he's gonna leave. But the one thing I did love that you did too, and I know it was kind of a challenge, was I came from a different campaign where like Anubis was so different. Mm-hmm. To, and obviously you don't know because you don't know who my old DM was, mm-hmm. to Anubis being here and be like, okay, this is a different realm, this is a different like uh plane of existence. Different dimension. A different dimension, so a different side of the god. Mm-hmm. It's the same god, just a different side of him rules. Obviously, he's going to want different things. And with Thok, I feel like he was never one to corrupt. So, like, the fact that Anubis kept pushing and pushing and pushing to corrupt him mm-hmm. um, into disowning the Raven Queen and follow him. Like, I tried once and I was like, it just doesn't feel right. It didn't fit. It didn't fit. So then, like, that's why towards the end, I was like, you know what? If you want the chair, then get it yourself. I don't, I'm not going to help you do that. That's not why I came back. And I was like, and as it was, Thok never wanted to come back like he just wanted a normal life like a uh, brief touch on his backstory his parents uh well he got separated from his biological parents when he was like two um because they were fleeing uh to uh for safety because his mother was a half orc and his father was a full orc and from the village that he's from uh the full orcs see half orcs as abominations mm-hmm. and then of course me being a mix of both was even more shunned upon so for my safety they fled and while they were being chased they crossed the river and he lost grip on his mom and he got swept down and he almost died but he got found by a fishing a fisherman and when he came to Fock was raised by a human family who were all fishermen so that's how he became like familiar with the seas comfortable with it and then eventually like joined some form of like he became a sailor like and just sailed yeah so with that's that brief part of his backstory but um but yeah like because he was saved by someone else Mm -hmm. that's why he devoted his life to save others and so the fact that this was a something that he saw as greed that he was just like i know i'm not i'm not for it (laughs) so it's like bye he's like you can kill me but that's fine i never asked to come back so my breakdown was a lot different for if you were gonna continue with anubis yeah the ending was a lot different it was so does now that now that doc's back alive Mm -hmm. does a part of your soul feel like fulfilled does it feel complete again oh yeah and I'm pretty sure you could see it in that episode too. Like I the can't way wait that to I see all our faces. Him, when I he's can't like, wait to see it either. Anubis. Yeah. I can't wait to see that that moment. I because like and I I little I by little as as I started not liking Anubis as much, I think I started referring to I kept changing myself to look like my old self more and more and kept having those nostalgia mm-hmm. of almost like shit, I wish things were the way they were before. But like real life, when things happen, you can't just think you want things to be how they used to be, but they can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I kind of just went in that route. And it's like, yeah, I wish it was. But you know what? Like, I don't have it that bad. And then especially the way that everything ended, I was like, what is the worst thing about me that this could, that can make this just completely fulfill like a sense of accomplishment and it was that like the fact that we had defeated Strahd yeah we lost a lot of friends but like we were all alive a lot of our friends were still alive and I was like the one thing the one bad egg about Thok was 
Anubis. And he's like, I'm done with this. So he's like, fuck it. He's like, I'll take... Th- I thought you were going to kill me. Like, I thought he was going to die, die. I did too. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the plan if he had stayed with Anubis? Just, yeah. So the plan was... Um, so OG Death in, in, in universe, in this universe, he has um, different... Or he had different uh, purveyors of basically bringing the spirits to different realms. Uh, they're called Reapers. So what he was going to do was he was going to uh, task you with becoming uh, a Reaper. But he wasn't going to tell you. He was going to give you a shiny new toy, which was a uh, Reaper Scythe. The way we have the Reaper Scythe is uh, in the way that we build it up. It's a lot different from Rufio's sickle or mm-hmm. his scythe. Because it's a Raven Queen Scythe as opposed to a re- legit Reaper. So you would be, every time you use the scythe and you killed someone with it, you would collect its uh, soul and it would get stronger. But in turn, death would also be getting stronger. So basically you would be harvesting souls for him unknowingly while you were getting more powerful. And so my thought process was I was going to put you back into water per se. I was going to have you go to the Crimson Sands where my current campaign is. So you were going to be basically a sand pirate collecting souls. And, uh... There, there's no like outward um, practice religion, because there are uh, there are basically god kings, which are just different sultans that um, tie down together for that universe's life force, which is this uh, life tree, and each root represents a different god king, and so you would basically just be going around and murking and collecting souls until we met up with you five years later. And then, however, you would be pil- pulled in, but you'd be a lot more darker and badass, and you know. You'd, you'd have this fucking massive scythe that you would be using. I'd be closer to a death cleric. You'd side. be a lot closer to a death cleric. Right. <clears throat> so, do you, even though you, you joined in late, do you have a favorite moment in the campaign? Pre, oh my God. during, like what, 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 do you, what favorites do Pre you have? Pre 100% was any time that you two would team up and try to do something together and it just went <laughs> horribly wrong. Like, I think that at one be... point, didn't you like throw him on a building? Like on, on a roof? On, on a roof? roof? Yeah. 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 And I was like, what the fuck are these two doing? Like, I don't know how we failed either because your strength is so high and yeah. my acrobatics is so high. <laughs> you guys <laughs> rolled really low. Every time. Every time. There were some every bad time. ones. Like, yeah. There were some real the bad ones. The dice gods were like, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anytime, anytime we tried anything, it's just like, nope. <laughs> what about when you joined the campaign? After joining, I think favorite moments and it's just and because i like the little things yeah. like you know mm-hmm. obviously like everything that happened with me i was like oh my god that was epic but like it's just the little things that i love um for example like just absidy for like having these like slight jealousy moments with me and dirt and he's like he's my friend like yeah. almost like <laughs> having to do the yeah like yeah I think the moments like that, like I just enjoy it, or like the whole like so genuine sticking your tongue out, or yeah, it's yeah. just the little things that I enjoyed. But I mean, overall, like it was honestly like I know I, I haven't been here as long as you guys have, but it was awesome and it was a pleasure joining. No, I I, I think, had a blast. I think I speak for for most of the group that adding you added a whole other dynamic, yeah. and it, it most, made everything well, how, so who much. Who says not? Mike hates oh, you. Okay, great. <laughs> Mike thinks you're a piece of shit. Perfect. Um, I expect nothing less. <laughs> I, before we segue really quick, does everyone have like a favorite thock moment? Because I have a favorite thock moment. Do, do yours um, for the way, yeah. My, my favorite thock moment, fuck, now I lost it. <laughs> um, yeah, me too. I love that. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's such a great part. No, the like thock as a character was really interesting to me. Uh, I like the idea of not liking undead and your first appearance was dealing with the lich. Oh my God. <laughs> you're like fuck seeing that um that's what it was so i was thinking about because i did this like way early into the campaign was i looked at everyone's first um lines what they first said as characters but i was really interested to see what the last thing everyone was going to say is characters i don't remember 100 percent what you said when you first appeared but i remember our epilogue and I remember Duke and you on the boat and Duke saying, this is your ship. What are you going to call it? And you described to me looking out at the horizon and saying, I'm going to call her Horizon. And that, would, for me, was my favorite Thok moment because it was him and his element. It was him on this journey, like not knowing where he was going to go. But he had this hope that, you know, this optimism that we hadn't seen from Thok until he literally yeah. came back, which I think was just that was my favorite moment was you getting your ship and you naming it. That was no, yeah, that's 
awesome. I, I loved uh, my the first time I used to find Steed, and uh, <laughs> and I mean the the hilarity of Thok being like, "What the fuck?" But <laughs> my my favorite part of the whole thing was when he went up to it and saw the the Pelor symbols, mm-hmm. and he was rub- like. Carlos describing running his hands along the symbol like really made me feel like there was a longing in a character that hadn't had a lot of time with Rufio. And I think that that helped build the buddy cop shenanigans that that would then, you know, exude from a Thok Rufio living in a same similar place. And like so like that drew Rufio to him just because of the connection between Pelor and his father and knowing all that stuff. So that for me was a huge moment where I was like, "Oh, Rufio's gonna he's gonna vibe with this guy." It's funny because piggybacking on that, um, when I did that, by then I already knew that Anubis wanted me to start swaying you mm-hmm. towards my side. And in my head, I never said it out loud, and I didn't know how to RP it. But in my head, I was like, "That just knowing that that was like your father's steed, mm-hmm. and that I already like." missed Pelor already and then having that it was almost like a jab that that in his heart so it was like like fuck like a little bit that's like i started caring for each one of you more and more and more and i'm like i can't do that to this group no like, that's crazy him and i have not talked about this no that's super weird <laughs> no. that's super weird that that just happened nothing was pre-planned or nothing so mm-hmm. uh yeah. do you have a favorite talk moment yeah um mostly because i feel like in a lot of our combat we never really did a whole lot of like teamwork moments mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when we were fighting before it became a draco lich when we were fighting that dragon and you did your channel divinity for him to do cone of cold which obviously you guys had talked about that beforehand mm. but i didn't know that oh yeah <laughs> because well no that's the thing is it, it was stuff that you guys had probably talked about but it was also things that my character wouldn't know about yeah. so it was things that i you I'm fully on record of saying that I tried to not research things that you guys could do Mm -hmm. because of the fact it's that much cooler for me when I see it happen. And I feel like I'm that much more in character because Shart's a fucking idiot. So, no, when you did your channel divinity for him to do Cone of Cold, that was one of those things where I was just like, we can do that. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the Misty Step all over again. Exactly. Yeah, because the first time you Misty Stepped, I was just like, what? (laughs) Do you have a, a favorite Doc moment, Josh? Kind of. It's... It, it's the end. It's when you you gave up Anubis. Mm-hmm. But it's not just because of that. It was the culmination of when you came in being very defensive to the group. Not in like a mean way, but in a, I don't know you people. Mm-hmm. And then seeing the little moments that you were talking about where it's like, oh, okay, Pelor, I like you now. And then you had moments with Shar, like, oh, it's another um, orc. orc. Yeah. And I know we had, we had a couple moments mm-hmm. and, and just seeing that progression to when you're finally like okay i can't be this person anymore and if i have to be this person i'd rather not be Be. alive yeah Yeah. and not just i mean the fact that you had thought made that make that decision but also that you were then rewarded for it yeah like it it was again it was nothing i was planning either because like uh what is it as it went because I was fully prepared of being like, okay, well, I'm going to tear this character sheet up. <laughs> this character sheet's totally going bye-bye after I make this decision. And, the again, no. I made a risk, or I took a risk, and the rewards definitely paid off. Like, mm-hmm. And, like, his the way that Thok was towards the end, especially, like, on the ship and being mm-hmm. hopeful and being, like, just the little things, like, even being by the water, like, when we went to the sea to go swimming, um... Like, that's how I always played him before. And then after I played it, or after he died and came back, uh, I was like, how how do I play a Grave Cleric? Like, what do I do? Like, as it is, uh, when, because he looks undead, but he's not undead. Um, I think even, like, the first episode that, like, I joined you guys, you had even mentioned, you're like, you're not? I was like, no, you're resurrected. It's like, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's questionable with him, because you don't know. Like, it's anyone sees him it's like oh th- there's not something quite right about him something's wrong he's something's off. wrong with him he's a little off he looks super super mm-hmm. super stupid. and and like he he took that um pretty much like what happened to him on the outside he took it within mm-hmm. and i guess that's why he kept changing himself back and changing himself back and just looking at himself in the mirror and just being like fuck and then finally like <laughs> whenever when he came he came back like it was almost like that part of him left with 
the holy symbol like the dark part of him it's like okay well if anubis comes after him then so be it like i'll fight it whenever i fight it but in the meantime I, he's just gonna live exactly. life exactly do you have a do you have a favorite thought moment yeah i you? talked about the paler thing the, right. the, yeah, yeah. the steed um i feel like i want to keep going with that like do you have a favorite rufio moment well i want to switch gears real quick okay and i want to i i definitely want to do each everybody's favorite moment for each character but i want to talk to that guy oh what's up yeah, Yo, you bitch. There Uh-oh. was, Uh-oh. <laughs> there was genuine emotion a lot of times in this campaign. I think mm-hmm. by everyone, uh, especially in epilogue time. But my heart has never felt more for <laughs> for you or anyone else in that moment yeah. than the final moments you had with Vin. Yep. Can mm-hmm. you talk about what you're was... getting misty eyed already? <laughs> <laughs> he really is. He's was, getting dude, misty. Can was... you talk about the feelings and stuff that kind of went into yeah. that and like, like. It try in your in in the best way you can try and explain to people how something that is so it, it isn't real per se, but yeah. has such a strong emotional connection to you. Yeah, and like kind of where that that came from and whatnot. Well, first off, I did want to say this before, but you were talking about how you're like, I hope it didn't feel rushed or anything. I was about, about to be motherfucker. I had genuine tears, <laughs> real <laughs> actual tears. Okay, I was about to make tears come out my face. I couldn't look at you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, was I, no, I, I don't think tears. anybody really could. <laughs> Everybody was like, no. I was looking at Josh while talking to you <laughs> yeah. because me and him were making eye contact. I'm like, and then yeah, he's dying in your lap, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, I can't look at Mike right now. <laughs> I think I did a lot of like. Yeah, it was no. a lot of I definitely there. was like this. I was like, I'm not gonna look at Mike. I'm not gonna look at Mike. I'm not gonna look at Mike. The I think the where the genuine emotion for it came from is it's been over a year of me having one goal. Mm-hmm. My goal was never to kill Strahd. My goal was to find and save my brother, and to have done it, and then still lost him. Mm-hmm was probably it was one of those things where i it was like you dirty bitch I know. and i know it's not your fault i know that it's i mean it is yeah. but <laughs> it is <laughs> then fuck you all right cool <laughs> <laughs> fuck you justin been wanting to say it for two weeks <laughs> just wanted a six foot wolf six foot tall wolf to be my friend forever <laughs> no but seriously it was it was the idea of having this one goal and actually completing it only for it all to just literally die in your lap it was, like I said, it was well over a year. Granted, it probably wasn't that long in Barovian time. Uh, I would say it about, it's close. been about a year. Yeah, because yeah, you made close. it very spread out, too, so mm-hmm. we had a lot yeah. of travel time. Yeah. But it's one of those things, It's it was just one of those things, it's hard to, it's really hard to put into words, because I've never experienced a loss like that. Like, in real life, obviously. Mm. You know, where I've been in a situation where I found out that someone that I cared about was in the clear and then they were still taken from me. Mm -hmm. You know, so... But it's a situation that I've felt that I've feared before. As a real person, I've, like, feared a situation like that. So a lot of that emotion is kind of what drove that. Is the fact that it, it, you know, I've got fucked up thoughts in my head sometimes, so thinking stuff like through is that being a possibility and then you know actually experiencing it at some point in my life even if it is during a role-playing game Mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where i was like oh fuck i really never want to feel this (laughs) like because feeling it in that capacity you know where i lost my brother who just so happens to be a wolf don't worry about it like kind of thing right Uh, dude it was it was rough it was it was a hard situation. Yeah. But no, it's, it, it, I, I, you could tell that I'm rambling right now just cause it's one of those things. It's, it's just difficult to even put into words. Oh, definitely. No, for sure. And that's, I, it's asking you to put it into words. I knew would be difficult because yeah. it would be difficult for anyone at the table, but you're the one in the campaign that, that experienced a shit ton of loss. Yeah. Ex- maybe the most, except for him, but yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite sharp moment? Is that is that your your coming to Jesus moment with with seeing you know Vin and Paul, and Paul and, in yeah. the forest or like what? Gosh. Oh, it. I mean, like one thousand percent the the end moment where I go back up to the cage and the orc is trying to get me to unlock my potential, which apparently and my potential has been trying to be unlocked the entire time. And I'm just like, nah, <laughs> I like playing with these puppies. That's literally what it's been. It's like, you motherfucker. 
oh puppy <laughs> he's been talking this whole time and you're like what's in the forest and Paul's like don't worry about it pet me <laughs> you're like alright <laughs> no but that's the that, that moment where I'm like just basically saying fuck off and then I have both of them come behind me and they're like yeah fuck off I was like okay alright then I, I'm obviously I'm making the right choices um no that was that honestly I don't think is my favorite chart moment uh, it's number two. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite sharp moment, though, is just because of how great of a storyteller you are, um, is when the berserker took me down. Okay. That's my favorite moment. Not because I almost died, but because of the fact that the berserker took me down and then he kind of tossed in that quip where as your eyes start to shut, you hear a very familiar howl. Mm-hmm. And it's because... Vin had come face to face with you in front of the church. Yep. And I had heard him essentially show up on the plane and I that's the first indication that I knew that he was there. Yeah. So that for me was my favorite moment because that's what really kind of drove my story into full gear. So I think that's that's what takes it for Shart. How do you feel about Shart's character arc through the whole thing? Uh I feel like his is the most how do I say this? With words. Yeah, usually. I, well, I feel hard. like he's definitely the only character that didn't really shift in alignments that much. Yeah. You guys definitely did. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. Hail Satan. Uh, bless, <laughs> bless down, y'all. I'm blessed down. Since, since you brought that up, what was everybody's alignment real quick? Like, at the beginning and at the end. Because I, I don't think I knew what your alignments all were at the beginning of this. I was chaotic good, right? Mm-hmm. And then I, what did I, is it neutral you're, evil? Or, you're or, you're um, neutral, neutral evil. Yeah. yeah. Neutral evil? Yeah. Oh, shit. That was a hell of a switch. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I would say that I was between chaotic good and neutral good. I would say, like, chaotic neutral and chaotic good, I think yeah. you were. Uh, I was lawful good, <laughs> and now I'm pretty damn close to true neutral. <laughs> I would say you're lawful neutral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, and then I was neutral neutral, and then I bumped up to neutral good. Mm-hmm. So. so it was that was a we, we we went through some stuff yeah we went through some stuff uh favorite sharp moment um i i don't know which one's my favorite there's a couple that i like i really like when same as as you when we had a failed interaction <laughs> or the whole like i'm a barbarian <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dealing with that no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> god damn it but i i really liked when you were in charge of the uh, berserkers and werewolves, mm-hmm. because it was Shart's first. Because the whole time he had kind of been in Rufio's <clears throat> leadership shadow, yeah, and that was your first chance to to show that you can be a leader, yeah. Mm-hmm. And as long and, as you don't attack other people, <laughs> and I yeah, fucked it up, well, no, and that's part of it. The yeah, part, the whole thing that that he finally got the chance, and he was like, okay, this is this is for my brother, but he still couldn't like keep his rage in. Mm. That it created this whole dynamic. And, and and at the end it, it came back around, yeah. which I, which I like. I like that yeah. Shark didn't have the support of everyone until later on. Yeah. Until he earned it. He until he earned, earned it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. What, you, what you got, baby boy? I'm last. You go. <clears throat> what? No, you're not. My podcast. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> He's um, the podcast. I'm the DM, DM now. <laughs> I'm the DM. No. <laughs> Where's my screen? <laughs> um, I <laughs> I have. I have a favorite, like, bit, and then I have a, a favorite it's moment. It's potato. It's potato. It's potato. <laughs> it's Sean. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, just uh, Mike organically coming up with Sean and potato on the spot. <laughs> my name's Sean. In game. <laughs> was fun for me to role play because it was a lot of yeah and you, you Mike sputtering and just keep rambling on like yeah he's lost you call potato gold and me having to react as different characters like is he okay like is there a real is there really a dog or did he pet it too hard and just stop moving um and then I think my I have roll deception at disadvantage roll dece- <laughs> super disadvantage um I think it's a, it's a toss up. The toss up for my favorite one. moment is between um, is Mike's emotion of Vin and him in their last moments because it was raw for me to like express it like me literally speaking through Ray like I'm sorry I'm so sorry and you're like you're good 
and me like you putting a potion down his throat and me having to explain like nothing's like setting right and you're just uh sputtering uh, and then the other moment, it's a tie between that and when the ear first gets ripped off, and you, mm. and you meet Strahd for the first yeah. like face to face. Because up until that point, you saw him the one time, and he just kind of was a dick. And you're like, this guy's kind of an asshole. I'm gonna knock him down a few pegs, but not my problem. And mm. then all of a sudden, he rips the ear off. He's like, well, now it's my problem. Yeah. So that that was kind of like my favorite because it was the turning point mm-hmm. for you that you're like, we're gonna get him. <clears throat> for sure. uh, okay. What you got, Patrick? I think one of one of the most impressive moments for me with Shar, like, was when you were doing the training mm-hmm. with uh, the werewolves and with Trev. Yeah, and because Shar, to this point, all before this, I always saw him as always had a joke, had a very like. Not so serious. I know that your family was always, like, Mm -hmm. the top thing. But a lot of things were, like, lighthearted and, like, everything was either a joke. You hit things. I'm not very smart. That's great. But then there, you could tell when things started getting real. Because you're like, this is to prepare to save my brother. Like, this. And even, like, for example, when you two, when we intervened as Thok and Rufio into that fight. And you were like, stay out of this. And I, I, me as Thok, I was like... Okay, like, I might be here just in case, but do we stay out of it or do we not? Like, just because that's when it was one of those, like, I could tell that I need to do this for my brother. Yeah. And, and, like, a lot of emotions between that and obviously, like, your final moments with Vin, um, a lot of emotions come through. And what a lot of people don't understand is as a... A lot of performers do, but people that do not perform don't understand is as a performer, you tend to drop a piece of yourself into the characters that you are portraying. Whether this be D&D with mics, without mics, with an audience, without an audience. Mm. This could be as a performer, like in theater, in front of an audience, so on and so forth. Like you already drop a piece of yourself. And now to do it in front of God knows how many people watching this, you're already making yourself vulnerable and you're making yourself that much more vulnerable that you are tapping into some part of you that's allowing that anger to come out, mm-hmm. whether that this be your outlet, your release, whenever you get mad, or even some part of you is being tapped for the sad moments, like the sad moment with Vin. Like, there was a part of you that was being hit. Oh, yeah. And that's why, like, part of me, I was like, I can't look, because I'm like, I know that you're making yourself vulnerable, and it's, in a way, I see that as being beautiful, but I also saw it as, like, if I look... I'm totally going to break down because I'm like, I can feel it and I'm not even looking at you. I can only imagine if I made eye contact. Yeah. So like just between that moment between you, especially you two during the practice pit and his small amount of time to just evolve from the lighthearted joking shark to the, this needs to happen. This needs to be real. This, this, this is serious. In just one, I, I, I want to say like one training session mm-hmm. yeah. for me was a, Okay, we're we're going into this. This is it. This is the final battle. Like, does losing Vin change Shart as a human or as a as a, a half orc? Half orc. Is it going like like Carlos said? He was lighthearted. Always had a joke. Always this guy. Does does Shart take things a little more seriously now that he's experienced actual loss? I would say so. And I think that's part of the reason why during the epilogue he wanted to go back to Locke and meet up with the Jaegers and meet up with Fennec. He doesn't have a family anymore, so he needs to find a purpose. Because you guys were family, but we clearly were all going different directions, especially when Absidy didn't come back with us. Yeah. Because of that, that's why okay. he wanted to go... Yeah, dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why he wanted to go out and find what's next for him. So I think that's that really kind of speaks to him in a sense that he's he's experienced, like, He's lost it all, in a sense. So now he's not as... Like, he's still going to be, <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be... There's going to be more seriousness to him. Yeah. Now that he's failed as a leader and been successful as a leader and still lost as a leader. So I think that works. I did think of another category to ask add for this, though. What? To ask the character. What's your most clutch role? What's your most clutch, clutch role? Yeah. As Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know what mine well, was. <laughs> I have a favorite. I have a favorite. My favorite sharp moment 
was uh, before we get into your clutch roll, and then we'll we'll backtrack to Thok. And I guess you could do one for Dirt if you want, but Dirt had so many clutch rolls. <laughs> you were like, I fucking love so this much. kid. <laughs> I mean, this fucking kid. <laughs> um, it was, I think we were like level five or something. I can't remember where. it was. This was pre-Thok when we were on the boat and we were going to save the little girl. Mm. And oh, Rufio yeah. dove in and, dumb. in full. <laughs> It wasn't dumb. I I will stay. I will. S- I know. Keep my my point to that. He did what he thought he needed to do to save the girl. He didn't care about him. He cared about her. And he dove in in full armor and tried to save her. And you know, Sharn ends up going down and you know saving both of us. <laughs> but um, and then handling the the drunk, the drunkard after that mm-hmm. was was definitely, I think, some solid sharding. Um, sharding everywhere. Yeah, you sharded everywhere. I sharded it. Uh, so what was your most clutch roll? Uh, my most clutch roll was after probably my worst roll. Um, <laughs> and that was when we were trying to sneak the bones back oh into wa- the watcher house. Yeah. Because oh you couldn't God. lift it and I had to do it. <laughs> so it was like right after I think I rolled like a seven on a stealth check. After I had rolled like consistently 15 and higher the whole way in. Yeah. I rolled like a seven. And then when she cast hold person on me, I rolled a natural 20. Yeah. Mm. I think that was by far my most clutch roll during the... During how was that? How was watching that episode as someone who didn't play in it? <laughs> oh, I think because especially since whenever I play, like I always either listen to it like as a just audio in the mm-hmm. car driving. And I remember, I remember that one because I was driving to work and it got to the point that I'm like, oh my God. So I like paused it. I parked my car at work, finally. I had gotten there, like, 20 minutes early, and I was like, fuck it. I rewound it and had to watch it, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to die. Oh, my God. I'm like, okay, well, hopefully he knows how to roll a new character up. So. <laughs> well, because no, I was still so mad that uh, – because we didn't know that Absidy was going to have the plan up. We have to bring it back. Yeah. We're like, wait, fuck, why? <laughs> <laughs> we do? Because, yeah. like, again, it's, it's been a while since I started watching because, like – Oh, yeah. Like, that was the – I, you told me that you did this what like a year ago, and I think yeah. I binge watched like the so hell much. out of. Yeah. And after every time I finished the episode, what'd you think? What'd you think? I'm like, dude, like let me finish, like <laughs> let me catch up. Um, but that's one of those moments that I was like, oh no, I remember, I remember that one, <laughs> and I remember having to park in the in the parking garage and being like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and then finally I was like, shit, I gotta go to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, did uh, did Thok have a, a clutch roll for you? What do you mean my clutch? Like moment that you like needed something to happen and it and you you got the role you needed. Like if not, he would have died. Had he not rolled I, the nat twenty there and she yeah, held she, him, I would have gotten he, critted he was, on whatever she did. He was mm-hmm. done. <laughs> I don't. And her dead husband. I don't guy. think so. Just because he wasn't around as long as you guys were. So um, I'm trying like, to think about something. And I, I can't, like I can't, I can't think really of any. Pinpoint. To be honest with you, there was never really a time that I was close to death. Like I don't think relentless endurance ever kicked in. If I remember correctly, like I don't think you, you ever dropped me, down. You somewhere. never dropped me down that far. I don't think any of you ever got hit by a critical hit around me because I never used Sentinel at that door right. on any of you. I never canceled out. A Didn't critical. you like not take damage in one of the major fights at the end? No, like I didn't take a single hit point. Yeah. Like I think I, I <laughs> no, think, it was when you were when we were fighting the Death Knight and you were Trev. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's right. What, no, because both of my. Secondary characters, neither one of them got hit because like <laughs> even Piotr didn't get guys. hit either. That's right. Um, so, but no, like uh, Thought got hit pretty good like uh, during the <laughs> the fight with Strahd. Like, I don't think this is a clutch roll for me, but one of those moments that could have been considered as one was when I banished Irina. <sighs> That Cause, was because yeah. in my head I, guess I was clutch like clutch RP play. Like, yeah, like, like that was whoo. in my head. I was like, shit, he's running towards her, and pretty much like he has that mentality of if I can't have her, no one will. And everyone and I was like, what has he done? And I'm like, okay, he just went. He just used his legendary action. He just did this, and I'm like, whose turn is? So in my head, I'm constantly being like, okay. It's, I don't remember whose turn it was, but I knew it was somebody else's turn, and then it was my turn. I was like, okay, I have a turn before Strahd. What can I do? I'm next to this one. I was over here for some reason, and I kept counting. Oh, it oh, was yeah. your turn. because Because yeah, you, you were like, oh, yeah, I moved. And I'm like, no, no, no. I was counting for something else because I was exactly 60 feet away, and uh, I had to be no further than that. 
And when I saw her, that's why I looked. I was like, she's unconscious, right? Yeah. So theoretically, she automatically fails to save. Right. And I was like, I'm banishing her for the next minute. So for 10 rounds, she's gone. That was so clutch. And mm-hmm. I was like, so I know clutch. if I get moment. hit, I'm going to get hit. But at least now, he can't just kill her right there and then. Yeah. So God, that was crazy. Yeah. So I, I would consider that. Yeah, the that was absolutely like very clutch. clutch that was that was some that again. That was the element that you added into this, where like, it, before it would have been the three of us, just four of us with dirt, just going in, and it's just like crash, bang, smash, like yeah. And that's what it would have been. And there was a bit of finesse that needed to happen in that battle. I was gonna try to were, banish him, but you, I was I like, he's too charismatic, that, yeah, and it's so, a, like I was like, it's charisma based, and I'm like, straw, like he's too charismatic. He plus five is he is he maxed out? Uh, He's very high. Also, he has legendary resistance. He has up to three. If he fails a, a saving throw, he can just choose to succeed it. So if you tried Sick. banishing him, and be like, that's a burn spell slot. And that was, I think, my last level four. Oh, like, that, was, uh, so that was it. Yeah, you thought outside the box, and it really I it, had to. Helped. That was Paid. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because I think but. before you came in, you what episode did you come in around? Forty, like mid forties. I knew it was the Amber Temple, but it was it was like either early to mid forties. Like. So we we were all still very green, and our characters were not very finessey yet. No, we were just oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But I think when you came in and and having a bit more knowledge and your character being more like, like nuanced, mm-hmm. it upped our game. Because stuff like like that, and then when I mean my clutch, my favorite clutch role, just dragon fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. Throw, that was that's the top <laughs> like clutch throwing role. the cocktail and yeah. just having that be the that way was, that that's that twenty. You yeah. rolled yeah. a natural twenty to to blow it up. Yeah, like, that was incredible. <laughs> and I think that stuff like that, I might not have gotten to as quickly had Thoth not come in hmm. because you just upped all of our games. Oh, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that one hundred percent. What but was your uh, clutch roll? My clutch roll. Yeah. Oh or, man. Or, or moment. moment. Yeah. Or yeah. Or moment. Um. I would say my my clutch roll was probably a series of rolls. Uh, it was when I fought <laughs> the werewolf in the werewolf den, and I nat 20 on three or four rolls, yeah. and the other one was like a nat 17 or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would I would say that was the clutch roll. Um, but I mean, also Strahd. I mean, being able to hit him and and end it was i mean how can that not be it you know yeah. being able to kill the thing that we all wanted to kill so desperately in the campaign like First it was taunts. really yeah <laughs> it was really Spoilers. cool it was really cool for for to be able to like and i don't i try not to like i'm excited when anybody at the table gets to like kill something because like it's super fun but to get to be the one that killed strad like it always it just felt really good. It felt really yeah. nice. I was gonna say my thought process on that was that it had to be you. Mm-hmm. It was the most fitting. Yeah, like it was almost one of those things where if it was like me that did it, I would have been like, "You sure he doesn't have like five more hit points?" <laughs> like, because <laughs> Who's next, Rufio. Okay, uh... it, it, it makes sense for you to have been the one to kill Strahd because you were the one who fought with him the most. I feel like. Yeah, we definitely were at each other quite a bit. You were, yeah. So yeah. And um, we said it from the beginning that mm-hmm. that this campaign was really Rufio's story for sure and he was uh that was the thing that i I honestly like not to toot my own horn but the thing i wrote like the way i wrote rufio was to be able to get a lot of mileage out of him as a character and to be able to like in the next campaign if if i decide to play rufio like there are still many storylines that are left unanswered for that character so there are still character arcs and things he can do that are you know could be integrated into any story So that was one of the things that I unknowingly, like after we played and like wrote a backstory and all that Mm -hmm. stuff, like I unknowingly wrote him a well enough backstory that he's a character that can kind of stand the test of time a little bit. So that's cool. That that makes me excited because I love, I love the battles. I love the stuff. I love the dungeon crawl and the, and the brain puzzles and stuff like that. But more than anything, it's the story for me. And that's, I watch Critical Role and I watch us. And that's just a testament to Justin. Like, you know, Mike said, your, your storytelling is on another fucking level, man. It, oh, it, it really is. Like, you, when you're like, yeah, I just made that up. We're like, I couldn't make that up on my best day. Like, <laughs> fuck, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got to be between those two things because it closed, it closed a character arc for my character, both, both roles mm-hmm. and uh and also didn't 
So, mm-hmm. it, you know, it continued on the, the, the line of, of Rufio. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about you. Wait, oh, I wanted yeah. to just piggyback really quick. I was going to say, we're already on you. What what I, I, well, no, I, I wanted to, to point out for the, the final blow was what I wanted was for Rufio and the over arc was everyone had a moment before the death of it, of Strahd, which was, you know, you had your level 20 moment and you had your you know, your decision about Irina and you had oh. literally death come out and grab straw to make sure he was still there. I and forgot about that. Dirt, <laughs> that was tel- crazy. dirt teleporting and pulling out the sun sword and slashing him through the back. And then you comboing and rapping. Like I wanted it to be like, it was a joint effort. It's that end of like that moment in age of Ultron where all the Avengers are back to back and, you know, fucking black widow spinning and, you know, Thor's getting his hammer and captain America's throwing his shield around and the Hulk's roaring. Like I wanted that moment right before it was the, the next snap. So that, that was what I tried to at some, like I've been planning that for at least two months of how I wanted the final battle to look like. So it was crazy. It was mm-hmm. yeah. very heavy. <clears throat> yeah. Very, very heavy. Uh, we can talk about Rufio if you guys want to talk about Rufio now, and we'll save you for last. That works. Mine's yeah. gonna be it's heavy. Oh yeah, it's gonna be oh, super yeah. heavy. Yeah, let's finish heavy like the fucking like we always, yeah, like, always. <laughs> just like, Why the not? Game. like forever, like forever. Um, I what we I clutch roll there it was. That's I don't know what else. What's your favorite said. moment? Oh man, um, I have a couple. I think it was really cool playing Rufio and getting to experience him. Uh, in various different points of discontent. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big moments for me that stick out that that describe Rufio as a character is the consistent friction, but also respect of Absidy. He he is upset about some things, but d- doesn't change the fact that he respects him as a, as a friend and would do anything for him. Um, going after the little girl, even though he was in full armor and like trying to save her because he thought it was what was right. Um, And I mean, just towards the end, getting more uh, focused on what, what was coming ahead and uh, you know, trying to help the Raven queen because that's in, in Shart's battle and his training session. When, when Rufio goes down to help, he's doing it because he's seeing the group get their ass kicked. He's not doing it because he wants the glory or he wants any of that stuff. He's doing it because he doesn't want to see his friends or, or anyone close to him get hurt. And, uh, when shark kind of spurns that as he should, because Rufio's not going to be there when, you know, push comes to shove. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he gets offended by it and throws his temper tantrum and, you know, gone. Like he's yeah. disappears. So it, it was really fun to, to be able to play that. Um, there's, there's so many moments, but I would say my, my favorite probably was, um, just, just the werewolf den. The werewolf mm-hmm. den was, was crazy. And, uh, I, honestly, in that whole moment, my favorite part was when Absidy was like, you know, he's going to kill him. Right. <laughs> and the, the little kid was like, well, maybe. And he's like, no (laughs) he's gonna kill him (laughs) i was like yeah (laughs) that's crazy you hit him with a that's crazy (laughs) that's crazy Mm, charlie (laughs) (laughs) made that reference (laughs) uh yeah so definitely werewolf den uh for Mm -hmm. sure and like uh epilogue i mean getting to talk to his father again was like that was the moment that almost brought me to tears and i couldn't look at you i was like looking like right here at the table i was like nope 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 so yeah uh, yeah that's my that's my favorite rufio moment for sure i think mine was when is was it esmeralda like towards the end yeah uh peggy uh, I know her more as Peggy than Esmeralda. Don't call her Peggy. I know. <laughs> uh, like that. I call her Peggy. Well, like, just for example, like, once you, like, defeated the leader of the werewolves and, like, you guys were on your own, like, it kind of, like, humanized you a little bit. Because, like, even, like... I played that that way. I, I, I think it would. Because, like, you can tell that he's been driven this whole entire time and he was on a mission and, like, um, like fuck i've always played him as like a secondary character like he's a cleric he's a backup like mm-hmm. he is support like that's always how i played him but like you could tell i was like okay you have way more invested in him meaning needing to be be and obviously you had all of this with your backstory and like the werewolf den and all that and like i think whenever justin described that as like 
And that night is the first full night restful sleep you've had in a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was one of my favorite moments. Not that you got laid, but the fact that you actually slept that night. (laughs) But also. But also you got laid. (laughs) Nice. Why is everyone fucking me? (laughs) You're just so 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 desirable. Stop. Damn. (laughs) Um, My favorite, I think, Rufio moment is... um, the first initial and what followed after uh Raven Queen interaction uh when you first met her and you're like what the fuck's happening and she's just like talking to you and it was a lot of okay keep up it was like in my head I was playing her a little Mary Poppins ass she's like we got shit we got to do you can talk while we're like we're doing a west wing walk and talk baby <laughs> I, I I got to get some I got to collect some souls there's some sick people who I need to end their suffering and you're like what's happening <laughs> are these are walls weird <laughs> um the the initial because I just read uh, Neil Gaiman's uh, Sandman, so it was a really cool influence because uh, I read the the death episode or issue when a Sandman first meets his sister and you realize she's deaf after she picks up the kid. That's my favorite kind of moment where it was just it was a microcosm of you know you processing and the character processing and realizing what he's getting himself into as far as the Raven Queen because you talked about being a warlock of the Raven Queen for like three months before we even got to it. Mm-hmm. And so I think you'd think I'm like, Hexblade's really cool and I want to be a Hexblade. I'm like, well, if we go Hexblade, we can go a little bit darker with it. We can get, we can get real like, you know, dramatic and there's a lot of cool like syntax to it. So um, I think you finally realizing that and getting into it and, you know, making offerings to the Raven Queen. You were very much about the Raven Queen. And then you add a new element where there's this death cleric. And you're like, our grape cleric. You're like, fuck yeah, Raven Queen. He's like, no, no Raven Queen. <laughs> no basketball later. No, no basketball. I'm irony- not playing with a monster. <laughs> I'm not playing with you, monster. The irony of that is that I was almost a cleric, cleric of the Raven, Raven Queen. Queen. Almost. So cool. I think it would have been, I think it played out perfectly because. Oh, yeah. Because Thok's like. You worship the bitch that took care, like took Anubis off his throne, and you're just sporting around, like, yeah, no, she's the true death god. Yeah, and you're like, you ain't the truth yet. So it's just that that was my favorite. That was my favorite kind of Rufio. I'm moment. burying you. I'm burying you. Let's see. Yeah. For me, minus the fact that I feel Misty like step. we prepared. It- no, I'm actually not- <laughs> I was gonna say Misty Step. No, too. we we talked about Misty. Yeah, when you did Misty Step, just because again, like I said, I don't like to research what you guys can do. So, yeah, when he did Misty Step, that kind of blew my fucking mind. Your, I didn't know. your face in that when it happens is so real. It was, because it was, it was genuine because not only that, I mean, my character wasn't there, but it was literally the face of, you could do that? <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. Yeah. And that's like, I, I remember that moment, like working it out of my head where I'm like looking at the map and I'm looking at Justin. I'm like, I can see over there, right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cast Misty Step and then Double Dash. <laughs> And you were like, okay, so you're gone. Uh, <laughs> they're there. They're going to yeah. move on. <laughs> no, that's not my favorite moment, though. I think my favorite moment, in, uh, aside from the fact that there was always just you and I slightly hating each other, mm-hmm. even though we didn't, but we're like, we did. Yeah. You know, um, aside from that, my favorite moment um, is really what told me that, uh, as I said before, it had to be you is after you got so frustrated that you couldn't hit Strahd when we were, like, level three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you went into the forest and punch dance your raged out, went full banana sandwich and destroyed Mongo's Claymore. That was the thing for me. Like, that was my moment where I was like, yeah, he's going to do it. <laughs> like, uh, it's not going to be anyone else. It's going to be him. And like, if someone else does it, you're going to make sure he doesn't wake up. <laughs> yeah. It was that moment I hate and love at the same time because I loved Mongo's Claymore because of, like, how how Rufio got it. But um, that was the most, I think that was some of the best RPG play that I had early on because I think that's 100% how he would have acted. Yeah. And like, even though it sacrificed this awesome weapon that I had, it was just one of those things where it was like, yeah, but he's upset. So, and like when Justin was like, it's cracking. And I was like, nope, don't care. Keep it going. And he was like. It's broken. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, okay. I'm well. like, jeepers. What are you going to do with it? You're like, I'm going to fix it. I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to fix and dick. You're going to get something cooler. And you're like, maybe I get Mongo's Claymore back. And I'm like, no, no basketball. <laughs> no, no basketball later. It's just the hilt now, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like a dagger. Yeah. Dagger size. Steve, yeah, because Steve, Steve made it a dagger. 
Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, because like, we made it back into the Claymore. It's, it's like it's I cool. put it. I put it on my my father's desk before I left. Yeah, before we went to mm-hmm. the beach. Or before, well, before I went to a mountain. Oh yeah, yeah that's mountain training. Yeah. I'm really excited to see because I still haven't watched the epilogue. <gasps> I've seen parts of it just from because I just finished mm-hmm. editing it like two hours ago. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm excited now that it's uploaded to sit down and just watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, excited to watch that whole weekend because, like, I know that we're, like, jumping back real quick. To give you props, what everyone so. doesn't know, that you felt it was Rush, but what everyone doesn't know is that those nine, eight, nine episodes mm-hmm. were all in a span of three days. Yeah. So, for yeah. us, we played a good, what, 20 hours 20 long. hours of D&D in a three-day span. Mm-hmm. Like, so we now. barely left this room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I slept a couple times. right there. Yeah. <laughs> me, me and Carlos slept across from each other, and I'd wake up to Carlos already dressed on his laptop. Like, hey man, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like drool on the pillow. I'm like, you're up? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I've been up for a couple hours. You're like, yeah, I've been watching cat videos or whatever the fuck Vine re- reaction. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't or know. Or playing um. Oh uh, never winter. Never winter. <laughs> yeah. never winter. Join our guild. Never winter. Yeah, do it. The boys, exactly. um, but uh, the Z. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to touch on that. That like you might have felt like it was rush, but it was not. Maybe that's why I felt like it's rush because we're doing it like da, 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 right yeah. after each other, yeah. and I'm like, I'm not prepping as well. All right, thirty two oh. Florence's too. It was gorgeous. <laughs> uh, well, it was um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is better that we did it that way. I think we're all stronger role players when we do it consistently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we kind of lost our stride when when sessions became harder and harder to like schedule due to schedules and jobs Life. and this and that. Yeah, yeah, like it was to no one's fault or anything, but it no. just got harder and harder to do it every two weeks or whatever. And I think that that hurt the role playing aspect. But to be able to bust it out in the weekend, I think we all kind of stayed in that similar headspace to where we needed to be and um, just... I agree with that. Play for 20 hours. By, usually by like episode two, we all hit our stride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and then we didn't have to do that this time. Yeah, well, not we only just... that, but now for this one, we had to jump into three different characters who we had RP. Oh, that was We'll yeah. get to that. that yeah, well, so but cool. anyway. What's your favorite Sorry, Rufio so cool. moment? There you go. Um, I, I, very early on, it was Mongoose Claymore. And you already touched on that. So the second one would be, it's, it's really any time that Rufio was a dick and then had to kind of save face or come back and show respect like he did it with absidy a couple times and towards the end especially after the the wolf den Mm. you could really see he's he he was trying to change he was trying to be a better person but i liked it even more when it was with dirt and when dirt started standing up to you and saying like my name's fairer call me that (laughs) and just the the interaction of of basically it, it was like you being a father and your son is getting older and now he wants respect and now you have to give it. Yeah. But you still see him as that little piece of shit kid. As dirt. As yeah. dirt. He's earned it. He definitely He's has. Hello. He's yeah. definitely earned it. But that, that's what I liked about Rufio is that he was, he, he projected so much confidence, but there was that underlying layer of self-doubt. Hell insecurity too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Insecurity and self-doubt so that when he blew up because of that and he, I don't know. Each each time he grew, which I liked a lot. I didn't think about that. Dope. You normally know, don't. Whatever. <laughs> wow. It is cool how we don't really see the the best parts of our own characters. All of us have to talk about it for us to notice what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. I would have never thought about that. Oh, I'm a hundred percent one of those people that I don't accept compliments very well. So like literally, I've, like the whole time that you were talking about fuck, I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> now imagine that, but for like constantly like justin you do great i'm like i made a whole apartment complex <laughs> i made a leasing steve please stop it's 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 hard I'm telling you bartender steve though bartender steve, great he makes hurricane a, he makes a mean hurricane <laughs> literally it's a who's, category five what's your favorite steve <laughs> who's your favorite uh, steve tell me who your favorite who's NPC. <laughs> who's your favorite npc my favorite NPC, Esmeralda. Come on, bro. What are you... Okay. <laughs> Damn. I'm fucking always thinking for the... Weird. Yes. <laughs> Hurtful, <laughs> like... Poonhound? Uh, Poonhound. <laughs> Poonanny. Uh, uh, it has to be Dirt. Like, it's yeah, Dirt, I, I, I don't consider yeah, Dirt as an NPC. Really? He's a, he's a PC to me. Well, well he, is, he is a PC <laughs> for you, so... That's... Yeah. I... Okay, we're taking dirt off Not the table. Not dirt. Dirt's off yeah, the table. Okay. too much of... I feel like everyone's like, it'd be Dirt. Yeah. I mean, Dirt was our our 
safety net. And I loved it at times, and then there was other times where I did not love it. Because, like, sometimes I feel like we needed a flounder, and Dirt was like, hey, go do this thing. And we're like, okay. <laughs> That's whenever I got frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> That's on me. He's like, I'm just going to tell you where to go. <laughs> I'm like, please, just fucking deal with it. Just go for it. I think we, we also kind of needed that because not only were we learning, but we were learning on camera and trying to do a, a story. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, if he had just let us flounder for an entire episode, like, we should do this. No, let's do this. What if we do that? Then it just would have made for a bad episode. We're not yeah. going to listen so to I, you. So I know 12. what you're saying. but <laughs> You don't understand when it takes like the group two hours to decide whether or not you're going to jump a five-foot pit trap or yeah. just to walk around it. Because you don't realize that you can walk around it or walk over it. Yeah. Uh, favorite yeah. NPC? Does anybody yeah. have one favorite off the top NPC. of their head? Yeska. I mean, Yeska. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Yeska's good times. It's hard to not Bale. say Yeska Bale's my because favorite. I loved Yeska so much. I mean, I liked Erwin a lot. I mm -hmm. thought Erwin was really Erwin cool. Um, I, I loved Erwin. Just because you brought that up, since we never went and did Wizard of Wines for him, mm -hmm. what was that? Because <laughs> that was a mission that we just never did. I didn't did. really read that chapter. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Gonna, we weren't going on that on yeah. that track. Because it was one of those things I still had He's it in my dead notes. now, so... Yeah, I know. Erwin didn't some, make it. I, I yeah. forgot what it was. It was something along the lines of uh, something was stopping... Something the was wine stopping from the wine from being shipped. Exactly. I know that. So I was just curious it would have been a fun like that. wine adventure, like through a winery. It would have been through Napa, but if Napa was scary, <laughs> uh, <laughs> scary Napa, scary and, dep and depressing. You're like, ooh, these wines are nice, but I'm sad. It's like Silicon Valley. Why is Thomas Middleditch here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, so like a non Yeska? Are we non, trying to also? I would say non like non Yeska. I would say a non Yeska, a non dirt. Uh, I wouldn't consider. I I mean you whore. Whore? Whore. Really? I really liked Whore as a character. Okay. Just the the way that he interacted with Rufio was mm -hmm. really cool. And I like that it challenged him. Okay. I don't Still. know. I just always, every time Whore came out, I'm like, damn, he's so badass. <laughs> so cool. Maybe I should follow Whore instead. Yeah, right? Fuck you, Lucifer. <laughs> I like sluts. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Get you in trouble. <laughs> Hashtag blessed down. Blessed down. <laughs> Uh, no, I liked, I liked playing horror. I liked whenever we interacted because it was the one person you can be pissy with because yeah. he would, he would punish you. Yeah. You're like, well, I want to break the claymore. It's like, okay, I don't give a shit. You're going to scream it out. I'm not going to talk to you or pick you up. Like, uh, I think I told you like early on, if you stop praying to him, your paladin powers were going to stop working because mm -hmm. there was a moment where you're like so focused on werewolf or raven queen. I'm like, dude, you got another, you literally have a. A, good, a deity who's just being ignored. And Sam Elliott does not like to be ignored. <laughs> God. That was who was in my head. It was, it was Sam Elliott. It was down here and angry. I canceled my show on Netflix. Fucking the Ranch? Yeah, the Ranch. Yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. because of uh, Danny Masterson. Well, no, it was... We'll what talk was, off camera. Okay. Uh, did you have a favorite... Was it Yeska? non Yeska, I would say... I fuck, I hated this one, but as Carlos, I loved it, was Andy... Was Andy? Andy? Oh, the, because the, the lich. The, the lich. Andy. Because it was one of those, was like... So <laughs> it, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was one of those, like... Y he knew that I couldn't touch him. Yeah. So he just flaunted it in my face oh, even more. It, yeah. So I was like... You, Power word kill, baby. I was like, you motherfucker. Oh, my God. I, I think I watched that clip, like, 20 times when you said power word kill. Because I try... Me knowing so much of the game already, I try not to metagame. Yeah. And there's... I don't have a poker face, so there's certain things that pop up that I try not to react to, and I will never forget Power Word Kill, because this one looks at me, and I'm just like, and literally, he's just like, and Carlos made a face, and I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I, I try to be better at not making faces yeah, after that. It's fun to play. I liked, but, yeah. I liked Andy as well. Andy's favorite kind of wolf. What's your favorite? He <laughs> likes white wolves. White. Is that what we said? Yeah, yeah I like think so, wolves? yeah. You ended up with white. It was white. Uh, what, what was your favorite NPC? Um, I'm actually gonna go a really, really bizarre route just because I feel like they are Potato. very underrated <laughs> for what they did for the story. Sure, that's the hags. Oh, oh yeah, because yeah. they you they're the ones that fully led you to Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're kind of like even though fuck them for killing Lucian, but <laughs> they are super underrated because they were necessary for you to come full circle on becoming a warlock mm. so vehicle. yeah yeah do you do you have a favorite i don't think you said a uh i i liked erwin a lot oh, was erwin. Oh, yeah. erwin was really yeah. cool i enjoyed him a lot i enjoyed uh honestly lady watcher the interactions with her were really interesting and it, and it changed up 
the dynamic, I think, of... It was, like, for me, uh, Rufio act like... Okay, so in the battle that we had um, in Val- uh, Valakai... I almost <laughs> said Valaki. <laughs> uh, in Valakai, um, when you were, like... I knew you dangled the carrot when you were, like, the Watcher House is that way, and I was, like... I'm going to the Watcher House! Um, you are? Yeah. <laughs> um, interacting with her, for me, in in having done the dinner with Strahd and stuff and talked to him, was, like, my warm-up. Mm-hmm. She was very, like, Strahd light for me. Yeah. So, I I very much enjoyed that interaction with her. So, she was a good NPC as well. She was a fun NPC. Wasn't she? She was a worshiper. She was, yeah. she was she, a full, she was full openly devoted, worshiper. Like, like, yeah, Strahd's dope. And everyone's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fucking crazy bitch. <laughs> was uh, that the same place that had, like, the death march or the, yeah. the, the weird death parade? Yeah, or they're like, yeah. like... Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a lot of favorite NPCs. I liked playing a lot of them. Gray was a, a real fun one for me. Yeah, I think, like I said, at lunch or dinner, he, he was a, a good outlet for me. Like, oh, Rufio's whining again. Cool. Or, you know, just, just that no filter, that was my deadpool kind of character. But I think, um, besides Dirt, because Dirt, like I said, for me as a PC, I, I felt like I was a player. Um, I think it was Irina. I think I had the most character beats with everyone with Irina. Uh, I, Irina is not fleshed out. She's a paragraph. She's a paragraph in the book. The book is just like, she's, uh, reincarnated. Strahd's obsessed with her. She's adopted. She wears armor occasionally. And I, I had to fully flesh this character that you guys grew attached to like that. You could have just ditched her there. I'm like, whatever, let her have her. I don't give a fuck. But you guys, like, gave a shit about her. I'm like, fuck, I need to build this character. And you then... boned her. I did. <laughs> so and many, then many times. Like, <laughs> and then, you know, you was had... It, was it? Tiny? It was good. Then it was, there, was, it was nice. <laughs> there was, you know, the love triangle. There was just so many things that Irina, I think, is my favorite NPC that I was. Yeah, for I me, she was one of the boys. Like <laughs> she, You were her boys. You like, were 100% One of the boys, boys Josh fucked. <laughs> yep. Like, Fucking boys. <laughs> I, I really liked Irina, but in the same vein as Dirt and Grey, she felt like a real, like a full-fledged character. Mm-hmm. So that, that's one of the reasons I didn't pick. Oh, you didn't pick Like, her. when I think NPC, I think of someone who was in the story, but not constantly in the story. Okay. So, like, Dirt, Yeska wasn't constantly there, but he's he's just, like, the best he's NPC. Yeska. He's Yeska. <laughs> he's, so, he's just Crystalia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Just, he is Crystalia. Do you man. know that? Do you, Do you know, know that? that? Guess but why? I remember when that happened. <laughs> but, but Dirt, Grey, um, those Irina. being the, and Irina were the three big ones that were NPCs, but not NPCs. Yeah, they're P... NPPCs, non-player but player characters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Irina was great. Like you played Irina so well. That's so hard. to backpack off of Irina. Yeah. Whoo, that what, was a cluster. What was going through your head <laughs> once, once Justin? So we all got those level twenty things we got to experience, and that was really cool. But what was going through your head when you made the decision to kill Irina? When, when uh. Lucifer said mm-hmm. it, just fuck. Like, legit, it was, I'm, like, I pictured myself on the wall, because I had the, the spider boot, boots, the, mm-hmm. and I, in my head, hear it while looking at her, and it was just a, ugh, fuck. Knowing that there was no other way, and I had gone this entire journey to save her, and to become someone who could save her, and the only way to save her was to take her away. So it was a lot of, yeah, it was rough, Where... especially because it, it, it's very relatable to have started somewhere with a goal and made a lot of decisions thinking of what the end was going to be. And when you get to the end, what you were striving for can't happen. Or it was just pulled out from under you. Mm-hmm. And you've made all these decisions and you've become this different person. And and it almost feels like a for what? Like, was it worth it to to lose this part of myself? To go from chaotic good to evil? Yeah. Like, Neutral what what, what did I do? Why? So where, is that where Absidy's headspace is at right now? Is that why he kind of went off on his own and he's like trying to figure out where he's at in life? Yeah, because he's he's very much of two minds that 
he still wants that power and he wants to be strong so that he can protect the people that he cares about. But the person he cared about the most, he had to kill. He had to get rid of her. And then he lost one too. And I think part of it is he's he's too afraid to legitimately lose this group. So if you just push them away, you can't really lose them. Yeah, you know? right. It's almost like he's afraid of care again again because he's afraid to lose what he cares about again Mm -hmm. because he lost xyz he lost one two and then he lost one two again Mm -hmm. in demon form yeah so there was just a lot of loss and a lot of it's still hard for me to articulate but it's so much of become it's like a walter white type thing where Mm -hmm. you become this person to to achieve something and becoming that person makes that goal impossible impossible yeah no i'm the walter white comparison's phenomenal i think because he starts out as a doofy teacher of chemistry and then he's like haha drug kingpin yeah uh but no absidy's character arc for me i i think i've said it on here before and now that it's it's completed in the strad version of things i think is my favorite arc uh because you went through some of the lowest lows and uh you let it affect your character in real time you know like from ses- from from session to session absidy changes based on what's occurred and i think you did a better job about that than than really any of us could have and uh like and I, I i remember we were sitting around it was the three of us pre pre thock and we were talking about you going bard because it was always the thing we were like yeah and then you can heal but you can sing and it'll be funny and blah 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 mm-hmm. and and mike just was like, bro, why don't you like worship the devil or something? <laughs> and yeah. we were like, wait, what? And you were, he was like, yeah, like if he's trying to take Irina from you and like he's just kind of bullied you and pushed you around and stuff, he's like, why wouldn't Absidy want to get stronger? And you were like, oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. And by the end, like Absidy was ripping chunks in people so fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. just ripping holes he was like I have two dogs and I can attack 12 times and run a thousand feet what you gonna do yeah. <laughs> where, well. you, where are you gonna go yeah. bring it big boy <laughs> the uh, to, to, to interrupt the Lucifer thing was completely unbe- unknown to you because I, I wanted I had a patron in mind for you. you said it was you just wanted to be a warlock and I'm like okay uh, and I asked you, I'm like, can you let me take the reins a little bit? Cause I think I can make something really cool for you. And you went, sure. I'm like, you're going to go great old warlock when you finish a certain task. I guess it'll go into what my favorite Absidy moment is, which is the, 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 uh, ritual of Abdanon, mm-hmm. um, which was the ritual of Lucifer. I wanted you to, I thought Lucifer, like who's badder than Strahd? Who's cooler than Strahd? What's the, like, coolest? And I'm so fucking Catholic. I'm like, this was pretty dope. Uh, I'm like, sorry. Uh, sorry, Grandma. But, you know, uh, who's who's the baddest of the bad? Who's the one that even, like, the fucking people in the Nine Hells are like, ooh, you worship that person? Mm-hmm. Like, no one worships that person. I'm like, let's make a fucking Lucifer great uh, old one warlock. Because if I think if I went fiend, which most people, I think, would go with Lucifer, mm-hmm. people would be like, oh, then you're just devil worshiper. But Lucifer is better than just a fiend. He's better than that. And so I think your initial, uh, the the whole interaction, the ritual, meeting Lucifer for the first time, interacting with that because you played Absidy. You were just like, maybe we're best friends. And he's like, are we best friends? And you're like, yeah, let me sign this contract I can't read because you're not going to let me, but I want to be stronger. Yeah. Like you kept bouncing him back and he kept calling you out on your bullshit. And you're like, I'm going to try to deceive him. I'm like, are you? It was just, it was a great moment for me. It was the same vein as kind of like horror mm-hmm. for me. So I really liked when you first met Lucifer. That's my favorite kind of absidy moment. Yeah, I think I want to go into that next because my favorite absidy moment, kind of piggybacking off of that, it's the first time that you used your powers because yeah. it was the most you moment ever. Oh, it was so Because great. I believe that was the fight outside of the Amber Temple. Mm-hmm. It's the first oh, time you yeah. actually and he, used it. He, and you yeah. did cast what was it? Minor Illusion? Yep. And then you just hid. Yeah. <laughs> and then what was it? A zombie was just basically a, or a vampire spawn was attacking your fucking image of yourself. Yeah. And we, I mean I, you and I were 
unbeknownst of anything. So mm. our characters had no fucking clue what was going on. But yeah. apparently he was just dug himself into a grave and <laughs> was just letting a, a, a picture of himself fight there. Because that was the most rogue warlock thing that could have possibly <laughs> happened. A thousand percent. So yeah. I think I, I made that comment after we were stopped recording. <laughs> I was like, that was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my favorite App City moment, I think, um, was, there's so many, uh, it, like I said, he, his arc has been my favorite th- throughout this whole thing. And that's so weird coming from someone who was just like, yeah, I wrote my character well enough that his arcs are not even done yet. Mm-hmm. But, uh, his App City, just, just the transformation, it's not even a moment. It's just him. I think, I think the character development from one point of being, like we had said, you know, chaotic good to being evil neutral, mm-hmm. like that descent into madness, basically, for me, defines your character. And like, it's, it, you did it so well. Mm-hmm. You did it so impeccably. And like, there's like, I, I want to talk about stuff we, you know, and if anybody thinks of anything they want to do differently, like, or would have done differently, no, now. Um, but there, I don't, I couldn't think of anything Absidy would have done differently because I think you, you nailed everything he was supposed to be. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm going to piggyback my favorite thing about do Absidy it. on that one because, like, same thing. It's not you in one particular moment, it's you as a whole. Because, like, we all went through some pretty good moments and character arcs. But when I look at Absidy, you went from you could be goofy as hell to pissed as fuck to super sad to the point that like your heart is broke your range of emotion like you as josh and you as absidy went from here to like here like meanwhile like fuck you never saw fuck mad you never saw fuck the closest thing you saw him as happy was towards the end. Like, Mm -hmm. but you saw Absidy through the whole entire spectrum, Mm -hmm. like throughout the entire campaign, like even from the very beginning, like I noticed it from then. And like, I thought you played because of that. I thought you had played before. And then like, he was, he was explaining to me, yeah, this is the first time that we're doing this. And it was like, obviously for your birthday and this and the Mm -hmm. other, he gave me the whole rundown. And I was like, Oh shit. I was like, I, you could have fooled me. Cause like the, the role playing aspect of him was so broad and so well thought out. Even if you don't realize that you had it, like mm-hmm. it read very well. Thank you. Yeah. So so much of it because I didn't write as deep as a backstory as you did. No. I mean, well, so I yeah. I had like little notes that I figured if you wanted to use, you could like X Y Z one two coming from Longshore, mm-hmm. um, but. What I, I envisioned, and it really worked out this way, is that the this the Strahd campaign is his origin story. So now I have a whole backstory, and it, it makes him so much more dynamic mm-hmm. than if I had just been, oh, I lost my boar, you know. And one of the things that um, that hit real hard too after all that with Absidy leaving at the end. And the parallels that it now has in real life too. Yeah, it was a it was an extra, because I was, I, Absidy was just uh the whole time. He's like, I can't, I can't do this, and that's not the same as as Josh going. Yeah, but to to have this group that Absidy had grown so close to, and then just be like, I gotta go, and. Yeah, I had I had something else there, but it was um Yeah, man, it was, it was heavy. just the parallels. Yeah. The parallels are Yeah, and if you're not understanding what that means, it means that Josh is moving in two weeks. Yeah, or by the time that this goes <laughs> Josh up, is I'll be I'll be car. gone. <laughs> yeah. Josh will be high in the mountains. Hey Josh, comment on how how are you doing? How's, how's it going? Yeah, Josh, comment here for how high you are right now. <laughs> how's it? Hi, brother. My job tests. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, I'm just rock climbing. <laughs> Wink. That's why art imitates uh, life. Yeah, life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one of the things I think uh, we can kind of finish up on because uh, I feel like we've done pretty much across the spectrum. Um, I know, and I think we've talked about this before, but it, again, just to kind of close it and wrap it all up in a nice bow. Um, when we started doing this, Josh and I especially were in very different places emotionally and mentally Mm -hmm. um i know i was coming out of 
a very volatile relationship that ended very poorly and ended up with me to doing like therapy for a few months, almost a year. And now I'm engaged, getting married and like moving on with my life and having this awesome like closure with Rufio and Esmeralda and you know Rufio kind of like seeing his his dad and getting to talk to him and and all that stuff that that stuff has been huge and and really does officially close a chapter for me in my life um and I don't know how you feel about that and I don't know like you you talked about Thok you know being him from level one and stuff and I don't know if you want to touch on on Absidy and like where you were and where you are and yeah um similar I mean I I was coming out of a I mean it it should have been done months before but sometimes people just won't let go <laughs> yeah kind of thing. they just was, won't go away yeah they just <laughs> will keep emailing you even though they're blocked on everything so I was in a almost a paranoid state I mean I was just constantly anxious and it really didn't go away until what is it June like seven months ago six months ago is when it finally ended but I was just in in such a like oh dark place and and things were starting to get better i like getting this new job and everything but absidy was my my attempt to force myself to be jovial because i was just like oh all the time so to go from that and to be like not crazy in debt but a decent amount more than i'm comfortable with in debt and and now i'm finally moving like it's something i've been trying to do for years i i have this close group now like it yeah it's just absidy went from very happy and jovial to dark brooding and i feel like i i flipped it Hmm. i'm still because of the past couple weeks have just been very hectic i'm i'm a little my brain's a little buzzy Mm -hmm. but aside from that i'm I'm so much happier than i was Hmm. even even with you know life I mean, I can even jump in that because I don't know if you guys remember. I mean, Carlos, you weren't here at that time. I was still recovering from being laid off when we started this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it was like right after we started this is when I finally got a job offer so that I was no longer making crap money. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, even though Shart was I made Shart almost as a joke because of the fact that I was so in such a depressed place because of what happened with my life at that point. Cause we when the first time we experimented playing that before Pat was actually there, mm. like I wrote out this ridiculous backstory and granted it all played out. But for me at the time, it was just funny because of the fact that I was in such a crappy place that I did it to make myself laugh. Do you remember the, <laughs> the height weight? and weight that you oh made him? Oh, uh, I don't. Cause I do. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at it. It was six, four. 500 pounds. <laughs> oh my god. He yeah. was a thumb. <laughs> oh my he god. Move. He could not move. <laughs> he was, uh, was alright. He's fine. 6'4, 500 still have the, pounds. We saw the OG character <laughs> sheet. Really? Yeah, that's, that's how they know. Oh my yeah, it was terrible. Chris Angel uh, was like 5'2 and 80 pounds. <laughs> okay, so he was hungry. Because <laughs> <laughs> he kept eating his food. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, the. Once we actually started playing this campaign, um, Shart was strong for me because I was in a weak place. So Shart was that strong sense, which, I mean, I recovered pretty well. Yeah. Like, I think, got a new job, got promoted at that job, got promoted again. Like, this is one of those things, It's since I started playing this... I've had consistent good things happen to me, which isn't something that's really ever happened in my life much. Mm. So, yeah, d and cool. <laughs> you guys like the hobby? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I'll, I'll piggyback from where I was at that point. I was like, we started in March, so I was I was three months into the finalized finalization of my divorce. Uh, I hadn't spoken to Mike and Josh and I want to say years. Uh, I would see you guys occasionally. You guys can't, you were you know, groomsmen at my wedding, but, uh, you know, we hadn't really reconnected since, you know, I left for USF, I would say, and you guys graduated. We never really had quality time like we used to because, you know, we were seeing each other all the time. And Patrick, I hadn't, I met once and I watched, uh, Trailer Park Boys 
at his at your guys's house yep. and I slept on a couch and I left. Um, I go I gave you guys an Irish goodbye because everyone was sleeping. Um, so it was just it was interesting for me because, you know, I was going through my first initial separation when we first made our first characters. And it was something I wanted to do because D&D was always something that interested me. And we made our characters. And then a year later, I always said, I'm like, I'll come back when I figure out how to play this fucking game. Like, it's so like when we first ran it, uh, I ran a one shot and I had them fight nothing because I didn't know how fighting worked. I had no idea how it worked. I didn't know how you knew when you hit, how to hit damage. I knew nothing. I'm like, okay, we're just going to do a mystery and you're not going to do dick. Mm -hmm. I think we really just kind of walked around a city for like 40 minutes. And then I was like, that was about it. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got tattoos and you had to figure out how you got the tattoos. Yeah. (laughs) That was the mystery. What's mine say? (laughs) That's what it was. Um, Dude. (laughs) Dude, sweet. Um, But then, you know, I played after a year and... To, pay, to talk about how you guys, your characters helped you with yours. My initial character helped me through my divorce. And uh, if you want to listen more about that, watch episode 10 of Junk Drawer. Um, oh, yeah. I, and by the time I came around back and Josh, you reached out to me and you're like, hey, do you think you'd want to feel comfortable, you know, DMing something and just, you know, we want to make a content for the podcast. We'll get Mike in. Because at that point, I, I think you also said that you hadn't, because Mike, you were going through your, your tough time. You hadn't seen them in a really long time either. Yeah. Like you guys were on and off. Well, that's the thing is I was working so much to try and make ends meet. Right. That And all my time was spent driving or, you know, it was either driving or working. That's all I was doing. So mm-hmm. what it meant for me then bringing, you know, us four together and eventually Carlos and, you know, looking at that first episode, everyone keeps cringing, but that's my favorite episode i think we've had is that so and it's not it's not because of what it it is as far as like it's four people trying to figure out how to interact with each other through this role-playing game with dice what is this a d10 when do i use that never um <laughs> but Eldritch blast i'll just blast no i use it all the time <laughs> but i like it because it was the start of this it was the start of a friendship between me and pat that i would say is super strong and you're gonna be a you know, in my wedding so i would hope so <laughs> uh, it's all right that. <laughs> um and it, it reinforced our relationship after how many fucking years and yeah. it it started this thing where you know i i'm coming out and seeing you guys on the regular and it's bittersweet now that josh is moving when i just you know i came back but for me, it's just I'll I'll always have this, and I'll always have this table with you guys, and I always I, I greatly appreciate it, and I appreciate how like I, I've said it before, how kind and open and how susceptible to saying yes because it's very hard when you know people argue at the table or you know these friendships that I've bonded with you guys and reaffirming and I'm rambling, <laughs> but that's 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 basically you know what my experience has been, and I've I'm very appreciative, I'm very grateful. See, like, I, my, obviously, like, my story is a little bit different than all of y'all's because I didn't start with you guys. And, like, uh, whenever I first started playing D&D, I can relate with a lot was going on at the time as well. Because that was actually, uh, I had gotten married that April and I started playing in July. So, of course, everything was, I was in a very good spot. And, um, but I've always, as, since I was like, a kid, I've always had insecurities. We all have insecurities. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, at work, I got this amazing job opportunity to do my dream job for a temporary slash temporary became a year and a half long temporary uh, period of time. And when I first got it, it was like I even told my husband, I was like, uh, I'm not ready for this. Like I started being really dowdy on myself, really insecure. And it was like shortly after I started playing Thought too. And I was like, okay, so I'm doing this with work. I'm trying out this game that I've never really played before. I'm supposed to be acting. And my first group is they're all performers and they're all actors in the theme parks. So of course they're comfortable with doing all this. I, I'm not an actor. You know, I just, I work around them. And so it was already getting me out of my comfort zone. And over time, like, as I started getting comfortable with the character, like, D&D was my outlet. It's like, whenever I got pissed, I would express it through D&D. That day, Thok had a bad day. 
like <laughs> it happened like and i just had to like take my mace and hit a tree or something um or find a monster and force an encounter or something um and then like on good days it would reflect in the game so like D was always like my outlet to go to from my escape of real life when you needed to escape real life um because all of us need that every once in a while some people have you know i also draw so that's another outlet i have but like i prefer doing this because it it forces me in a good way to interact with people like and people with the like um uh not hobbies but like likeness that all of us are here for a reason to play this game to escape reality and to enjoy each other's company even mm -hmm. though it's like a world we're creating together we're still creating something even though it's intangible and so over time like as Thok started becoming more of a realized character with work reflecting on that was I started being more confident at work so it kind of like helped I was like okay like I can get away with way more than I thought over here let's try make taking some risks in the game so Let's see what I can get away with here. And it kind of like balanced each other out. And it helped me as a person. So like, it's crazy how something that, again, it's fantasy can impact reality. Definitely. And yeah. in such a great way, like, you know, some people go through downs and ups and stuff. And just the fact that you just need to escape and get out of your own head even if it's for like two hours like every week or every other week or however long it takes to play like so be it like i people make fun of me all the time and i'm like you know what like my addiction i don't pay for anything because i already have all the dice <laughs> and all the books so everything i've already paid for i literally just sit around the table for four hours and pretend to be something else for a while i was like i'm not hurting anybody i'm not insulting anybody mm -hmm. i'm just not hurting yourself fun. nope mm -hmm. i'm not hurting myself like and i can't afford anyways to do anything bad so like it's a healthy outlet it's a health is a healthy outlet mm -hmm. exactly I agree. and like i i like to take things from different areas and like um like one of the things especially like with games and cartoons and stuff like i one of the quotes i've always rung out in one of my favorite series i'm not gonna say what is but you can guess uh it says that even at your lowest point you are open to the greatest change like i feel like every character kind of like had that moment in this campaign mm -hmm. and it was so awesome like for me who i just sat in the back at first like i didn't i was never intending to join you guys at first i was just watching just because I thought it was fun, and then I was drawing fan art, and then this was like, oh, you should come and join, and I'm like, yeah, but I don't know them, and I don't know how I'll be received, and he's like, yeah, you'll be fine, <laughs> and then, like, I was messaging, like, I'm a pusher, uh, yeah, <laughs> peer pressure over here, um, uh, and then, like, I was messaging you, I was yeah. like, hey, you know, are you sure that he's okay, if so, like, I already kind of have a character, will this work, is it okay, so, like, the fact that I was able to take a character that I thought was done for, and bring it over, and continue his story, yeah like for me it's kind of awesome and to the point that i'm actually writing um i'm writing a book and the book is fox book like i start what i started That's doing awesome. is i'm writing his so cool. i'm start i'm writing his backstory now like from when he was a kid and like everything that i was saying earlier like with his family and stuff i'm writing it all down as if it was like a journal entry mm. so i'm writing it as, so it's gonna involve as much as i can remember from my first campaign because i don't take notes with them so <laughs> who does I ain't gonna remember right. shit. But then from leaving them, I'm gonna write as much as I can remember from this campaign. And this one's gonna be easier because I can rewatch things and actually write mm -hmm. it in the book. Okay. And then from here, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes, you know? And that's almost how it is with the reality, too, because I'm kind of excited to know where like my life goes. And if you would have asked me that five years ago, I would have been like, oh, I don't think more than like six months ahead Same. in the future. I don't think long term as Carlos. Mm -hmm. So the fact that now it's like, I do like I'm like oh well in five years I want kids and this I want this I want this you know that was never me so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where that art reflects my life as this, well. I I agree this is definitely something as a as you know we started doing in March uh, for your birthday and it's now something that it's going to be less and less you know we'll be able to sit at a table all five of us plus and be able to do but this is something i don't know i ever want to to stop doing yeah you know whether where, wherever any of us are 
whatever we're doing, you know, to be able to set time aside and, you know, roll some dice and play some pretend with each other, I think is something that's going to be very important to me and my life, regardless of what it is moving forward. You know, I don't know how many people here know, but like my, this could be my last year in Orlando, you know, it looks like Michigan is where I'm going next, but, uh, North Texas, uh, Illinois, like not, not Orlando, not Orlando. And, um, you know, where am I? I'm not going anywhere. That's that's, that's news to me. Yeah. That's (laughs) news to pretty much everybody here. Yeah. Um, so like, regardless of where any of us are, I, I, I always think that, you know, it'll be good to, to sit down in front of a laptop or at a table or Mm -hmm. whatever has to happen and, and play pretend with you guys. Cause this definitely changed my life for the better. Um, and, and I mean, I'm going to throw you another compliment, but it wouldn't have happened had you not come into my life and it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been so gung ho. I mean, I remember in the early days of this, when, when I got the bit by the bug, there were nights where we were texting until like four thirty in the morning yeah. and we were just like going back and forth about stuff and talking about this and like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that stuff for, for anything. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely opened up a new side of, of me in my life and you know, it's thanks to everybody at the table, mm. you know? So, yeah. but, uh, yeah, with that, well, Yeah, I I wanted to say one last thing, kind of on that note, that since this was for my birthday, it feels like the best possible birthday gift. Like, it's been a year plus of just hanging out with friends and getting close to you guys, and similar to how Thok now has the the tattoos for each one Mm -hmm. of of us, um, it feels like we each have, have... you know, given a part of ourselves to each other. Mm-hmm. And I did the same thing with Absidy. I think everyone was in that, in that chat. Mm-hmm. Like, so he went sure. tome, packed to the tome mm-hmm. and each yeah. spell represents one of you guys. And actually, so I was planning to buy a book of shadows mm-hmm. to have it. And the one that you got us, the one that says, Christmas. yeah, what, what does it say on mine? Oh, yours said dope rhymes or something. Yeah. Dope beats or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Dope, dope rhymes, dope rhymes. Yeah. So that's now his book of shadows. Oh, nice. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no. Cause that, what was yours was dope rhymes yours was bad decisions uh, no yours was bad decisions no mine was mine said i regret nothing oh yeah mine nothing. was bad decisions and weird thoughts yeah y- yeah yours was something like that yeah that was fun i used yeah. that for my desert campaign that's where all my maps are <laughs> nice yeah oh there it is but uh well okay so what i want to do what i want to do since we were gonna have them sign the table yeah. anyway kind of want that on camera okay like i think um so with me moving uh, we our ta- our setup is two tables as you can see, yeah. and we're we're gonna split them up. So we're gonna sign the tables so that we can do it. I th- I don't think this part will be in the actual podcast, but in the video version, I think it'd yeah. be cool. So yeah. if you guys want to start signing, well we'll do the we'll do the yeah. sign out. Yeah. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, this is not the end for us as a group. Um, we're gonna do some one shots that will be on. Uh, the channel later throughout the year and then uh, campaign two I think is going to be straight homebrew content right yeah I'm never doing a book again we're, <laughs> never, we're never doing a book again um, and you, you know we're going to I think we're, the plan for the end of this year maybe early next year is to start streaming um, so just make sure you, you keep an eye out for that um, we're going to try out some new characters and I'm excited about some new things but you know I think we'll always probably at some point you know once a year if we're not all if we're not all bringing our characters back i think once a year we should come back and do a one shot with uh with our core four yeah core five whatever oh and uh yeah and just run some shit so uh wreck each other's faces yeah like comment subscribe let us know your favorite curse of strad moment and uh thank you guys for coming on this journey with us oh, we'll we got the wrong camera. see you another time <laughs> goodbye bye uh-huh. fuck it Let's do, the Let's do it. Um, okay, so which one do you want? Which 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 one is? is did you? Th- um, I don't know. I think you should take this one. You know more people at this table. Yeah, that's that. Craig's wife, Sam, who we can get to sign it anyway, and Jorge. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that one. I think this one is gonna. Yeah, so go I need to Josh. resign that one and put "I love you." <laughs> Look, you need to add on to it.
My signature looks nothing like anything. <laughs> it just looks like a mess. It's literally... Uh, uh, those I, don't I, even I, look the I, same. I, I, they don't. They really don't. Like, I couldn't even tell you, if I didn't watch you write it, which way you started from. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the mystifying <laughs> part. Right you gotta no, sit on both sides. <clears throat> honestly, um, sides. no, the reason like, that my signature... Like, signature over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. The reason my signature got so shit is because working at the tattoo studio, I literally had to sign my name, like, 20 times a day. Because any time I prepared a form for somebody, I had to sign off on it. So oh, yeah. my signature just kind of like started to morph into more and more of nothing. I'm trying to think what <laughs> That's what happened from happened. working at uh, Marshall's. So yeah. was... For me. Like yeah. I just, oh, fuck. and now I don't ever write. So. What's that? Was it Steve? Whore and Raven Queen. Aww. You whore. That means I gotta add the Lucifer. Oh, I thought, okay, that makes more sense. From this angle, I thought it was uh, Wizard Steve hair slash mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, it might be. <laughs> Uh, do you remember what that. your your first lines were? I like I said, I don't, I don't remember what thoughts were. Yours one. was "shut up, dirt." <laughs> uh, Shorts was "why are you covered in dirt?" Dirt's was uh, "what is that? Kill it." <laughs> or no, his first words were "I don't think I don't know about this." And Absidies were "what up, my dude?" Mm -hmm. What's up, my dudes? What up, my dudes? What's going on? What's up, I thought dudes? about after it all happened. I kind of wish I had ended I with mine was like, "Thank you all, business. dudes," or yeah, like you. something yeah. like that. But I like how it ended. Because I was in the bushes. It was good. It was. It was I, state your. Was like, it was state probably state, state your business. State your there. business. Funniest moment. moment. Yeah. Carlos, you got to sign this one, right? Yeah. Okay. I can't get over that. Do do do. Okay, we're not signing. I like that we all had the fidget spinners this time. Yeah. Not, not just me. I was literally just messing with this. Yeah. <laughs> so no, seriously, what do you think was the funniest moment of the campaign? Because mine was 100% when you bed. fell off the mountain. That wasn't funny. <laughs> what was not funny. It was a little funny to me. Not funny. Because if I remember correctly, you were being cocky about the fact that you could do it. No, that was when I fell down the mount, the, the, the cliff face when we were doing the Tempest thing. I gotta get my dice box because I, I want you to sign. Of course, it. I was not being caught. Your dice box? Yeah, I have to get it out of my car. But oh yeah, I mean, okay. he's so bad. Oh. This, so this one's Pat's. This one's Josh's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I'm will not gonna it. sign my table. Let's no. Because <laughs> it's stupid. It's awesome. Everybody always wants gold. I, so, he's I think I did silver, silver both times. Did you? Oh, he's yeah, just, you did. He's just got silver. Mixing yeah. it up. Really care. I was like, if I could draw Anubis' head without fucking it up, I would, but I don't feel like that. I like your. I draw his head. So. Oh, adding the, the character name, too, yeah. I didn't do his little squiggly. Does that say like, comment, subscribe? It says la you ho. Oh, not, not like, comment, subscribe? No. La you ho. I was like trying to do like the other one. Squiggle, squiggle. Squiggle. All right, let me... So I'm signing this one, right? Yes. Everybody wants gold. Yeah. Do you gold this? <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Is that just yeah, gonna be most of our funny moments of things that happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty much the worst. Oh my god. Uh -huh. Ooh, right. Was it really great? Oh, it's pouring. Oh, oh, I I so okay, well, god. I don't know if this is gonna stay in here, but if it does. That was a sign and shit. We signed stuff. Woo! We'll see y'all later. Woo! It's raining outside. Miss you. Like Love you. Kiss Justin on the mouth. All right. Who's doing it first? <laughs>